Welcome and today I'm going to talk about my Senna prediction for the month of September, so let's start. And there we go, so first of all for Utah and Iowa, in Utah I see Mike Lee easily defeating a Democrat backed Evan McMullen by 20% while in Iowa I see Chuck Gracely uh, easily winning re-election just like previous times against Franken by the same margin of around 18 to 22 percent just like in Utah and now for the likely states uh, let's go to the state of Florida just because it's the closest to a safe margin it's going to be Marco Rubio against Val Demings the Democrat nominee and for the polling it's been quite off in my opinion you can see it's it's quite close but most of the polls all well, these pollsters are not the greatest and some of them even have 30% on the side for some reason and what I think will happen is that Marco Rubio will easily win re-election in 2022 and I see him winning here by a margin of 8 to 10 percent and now for the other states or races I should say for the race in Washington in Washington Patty Murray the incumbent Democrat uh, that has been there since 1992 will face Republican Tiffany Smiley and uh, it was looking like this was going to be quite closer than expected, but some of the momentum has uh, vanished in the last weeks in this, uh, or I should say the last month of August. So you can see a lot of undecided voters, but what I think will happen is Patty Murray will probably most likely win re-election, but I don't see her doing uh, as bad as last month. I see Patty Murray winning here by the same margin as Florida, 8 to 10 percent, and now for the race in Colorado, so it's going to be uh, Michael Bennett, the Democrat incumbent against uh, Joe O'Day, who's trying to run uh, a campaign like Cory Gardner, which it's kind of makes sense because it's Colorado, so it's almost a safe state. And the uh, yeah, there we go. So you can see the polling really has it as either lean D or likely D, and which is quite fair in my opinion. And yeah, here we go. What I believe will happen come November. Uh, I think if the economy stays the same, uh, Michael Bennett wins here by a margin of just above a lane margin, aka a likely margin of, I'm going to say 5 to 7 percent. And now let's just go to the other races. So for the racing in North Carolina, so if you don't know yet, it's an uh, open seat since uh, Richard Burr, the Republican, is retiring, of course, and uh, the Republican is nominated nominated uh, Ted Budd and Cherry Beasley and uh, if this was a blue wave year this would be extremely competitive but it's looking like it's not going to be 2018 of course and uh, the polling has been quite meh it's really not the greatest I'm waiting for better polls I think uh, this Trafalgar poll was pretty decent but I still see the undecided voters going for Ted Budd and I see Ted Budd um, he wins here by a likely margin, uh, the same margin exactly as Colorado, 5-7%. to 7%. And now, uh, let's move on to the other races for Ohio. In this race, in the Buckeye State, so Rob Portman, same thing as kind of like Richard Burr, he is retiring, so it's an open seat. And J.D. Vance, the Republican nominee, quite populist against Tim Ryan, who is trying to run bit of a mansion-like campaign but uh, let's just go to what the pollsters are thinking so uh, they're quite bullish on Ryan winning but uh, it's most likely a fail by them so you can see Trafalgar and Emerson see JD Vance most likely being the victors and you know they still have a lot of undecided voters which is why even though it's only a 5% margin by them uh, those undecided voters will break for the Republican Party to a certain extent. And I see uh, JD Vance winning here by 5 to 7%. Uh, Tim Ryan has done quite well at uh, making it a big focus of the GOP packs to, to fund JD Vance because they were scared of Ohio being more competitive than expected, but it's going to be an easy one for the GOP. And that's it for the likely states. So you, as you can see, 46 seats for Democrats and 48 for Republicans. And now for the elite states. And for the first one, for New Hampshire. Six years ago, Maggie Hassan barely won here by 0.14%. And now she's trying to run for re-election with her Republican enemy most likely either being Bulldog or Chuck Morris. But 
Don Baldock has really gotten more momentum recently, which is why he probably will be the GOP nominee, which is not a good look for the Republicans since New Hampshire it is really not the state for someone like Baldock, who is really, really a, a hardcore Trumpist. And you can see some pollsters already saying likely D, lean D. And what I think will happen is if Don Baldock is the nominee by the GOP, which kind of does look like he will, this will easily be a lean D state for the Democrats. And I see Maggie Hassan winning here by, I'm going to say, 3 to 5%. And now let's move on to another key race for Wisconsin. In 2016, uh, Ron Johnson once again got lucky and he won here by 3.4%. 2022, he's going to go against Democrat Mandela Barnes uh, right here, as you can see. And uh, it's, you know, an interesting race because Ron Johnson was not going to run at first. And the pollsters are quite uh, divisive on this. Some of them are saying Tussup, Tiltar, Lenar, or some of them are saying likely are. And you can see Mandela Barnes has had a better month. Even Trafalgar for some reason. Uh, Ron Johnson is down by almost 3%. Yes. But uh, what I think uh, will happen is that the outside voters will go for Ron Johnson alongside uh, the momentum. I think is slowly getting better for the GOP. It is slowly getting better. But this drops from a likely margin from last month to a lane margin. Of course... Uh, I see Ron Johnson winning here, but he now only wins here by three to five percent compared to before, which was five to seven percent. And yeah, that's a big change in this uh, month. And talking about key races for another key race in the state of Nevada. So Cortez Masto is in big trouble in uh, this time around. Uh, six years ago, 2016, he she won here by 2.4 percent, but now she's in big trouble because Adam Laxalt. One of the best, uh, I think, uh, nominees for the state and maybe one of the best GOP nominees in this cycle for a key swing state uh, really will make it hard for her to win re-election. And yeah, you can see almost everyone saying a true toss-up by all means. And uh, because of the undecided voters, oh yeah, you can see Laxalt taking a lead just recently in this month. Uh, and you can see... Laxalt is ahead of Cortez Masto, and the undecided voters will split to some form to him, uh, Adam Laxalt. And what I think will happen is this will likely be the most easy pickup for the GOP, whether whether they lose uh, Pennsylvania, Georgia, or Arizona, they will most likely win in Nevada by a margin of one to three percent. That's actually it for the lean states. So, uh, really competitive, and these states can really go anywhere, in my opinion. Uh, let's start off for uh, Arizona. So six years ago, John McCain easily won his home state by 13%. And now, uh, because of the Arizona GOP having gaffes after 2016, uh, they lost the seat in the 2020 special, which Mark Kelly won easily against uh, Martha McSally. Uh, the GOP nominee is Blake Masters, a populist, uh, which will be interesting for the state of Arizona and for the primary. And of course, you know, Mark Kelly is running for re-election. Uh, the pollsters are saying somewhere around a toss-up, likely D for some reason, or lean D, which I mean, I kind of understand lean D, but likely D is just way off. Uh, Blake Masters, he is okay, I think. Mark Kelly is an okay incumbent, but because of how this midterm, because of the president uh, party being in power, usually that means they will lose uh, support in the midterms, and yeah. And as you can see, Blake Masters is trying to catch up with Mark Kelly. And come November, when the GOP base is really, I think, uh, at its peak, uh, I think uh, the last month was a great month for the Democrats, but it's slowly coming down. I see uh, Blake Masters not winning by a lane margin. I think that's not possible this time around, but he still uh, barely wins by a tilt margin. In my opinion, I still think uh, the GOP will barely flip this center race by a tilt margin of 0.75%. He may be a big no-name in the state, but Arizona... And Arizona is not a gray state unless you're a centrist, centrist Democrat. And now for uh, the states... Which one should I go for? <clears throat> so as I was saying, let's just go to Georgia. So in Georgia in 2016, it was safe uh, winning for the GOP. 
In 2022, it's Warnock who won in uh, the 2020 special for the polling. Let's just go. So the polling has been quite neck and neck. Uh, Warnock is leading in some polls, but while Walker is leading in other ones. The main issue for Walker is li the Libertarian Party once again. And the runoffs, I think, uh, the race will likely go into a runoff. And depending on the enthusiasm after the, the midterms in November, it's really going to be quite, you know, at Tussa by all means. It also depends on if the GOP in certain races decides to say that the election was not good. And what I, I want to say as well is, you know, Walker is quite prone to gaffes alongside being, being a weak debater. Uh, while Warnock is okay at debates, I think, you know, that's another issue for Walker. His bad charisma and the gaffes. Well, could be the reason why he loses. I think this is a true tussle by all means. Uh, but for now, for now, for this month, I will have Raphael Warnock winning here by a tilt margin. Uh, winning in the runoff, just like he did in, in 2021 once again. And uh, while well, for the other tussle, basically, for Pennsylvania. In 2016, it barely went to the GOP and Toomey, who is now retiring. And, he, and Toomey won here by 1.4%. And now in this cycle, Oz has gotten the GOP nomination while, you know, Fetterman is the Democrat nominee, former lieutenant governor, so the primary, I mean, I should say the the election polling, yep, you can see it's basically neck and neck, just like uh, Georgia, except there's a lot more poll misses in my opinion, I think. Uh, there's no way Fetterman wins by a likely margin unless Oz has a huge gaffe, but uh, the undecided voters will likely go for Mehmet Oz. It is why this race will really tighten up. But the main issue for Dr. Oz is that he is good at campaigning, but his team is quite bad and they can be a big uh, letdown to him. I think, you know, and the way that Dr. Oz can win is by rallying all the base, the GOP base behind him. But because of how bad his uh, campaign team is, I wouldn't be surprised if they get the, the base behind him, but they forgot about the independent voters who Oz is doing well with at the moment. So, and because of that and the midterm not being as big of a red wave, it's still going to be some form of a red wave, but not as big as what people thought two months ago, which is why I do barely give Fetterman the win in this race. And he wins here by one of the closest margins. I mean, I'll be honest with you, Georgia and Pennsylvania are both toss ups by all means. So you could see uh, Pennsylvania and Georgia go to the GOP, but you could also see uh, both of them go to the Democrats, which is what I think will happen at this time, uh, or I should say at this point in the midterms. And as you can see, the Republicans won with 51 seats against the Democrats, 49 seats. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video.